you'd be hard pressed to find a more potent daily reminder of the unusual and frightening times we're living through than this. 20,300. 20,400. 32,000 and 65 have now died. Although the daily death toll is now shrinking, the coronavirus has had a devastating toll on Britain, with the latest figures putting the numbers who have died with the virus at more than 40,000. But as the peak of the epidemic recedes, and Brits are encouraged back to work and school, fears over safety in classrooms and workplaces have led some to question the government's plans to reopen the economy. So, for most Brits, how likely is COVID-19 to kill you? It's very unusual for someone to die from it, despite all the headlines. You, if, if you actually get the virus, there's a 50% chance you have no symptoms. You won't even know you've had it. There's a 40% chance you'll have what is like a cold, in some cases a little bit more shaky, a bit more protracted. You go to bed, you feel very tired. You may get some breathlessness. And then in about 5% of people, the oxygen level in the blood can fall because the lungs are being congested by the reaction to the virus. And that only happens in a small number of people. And that leads, in some people, to respiratory collapse. Now, we don't know why some people are selected to have this very adverse reaction. But it, on the whole, it's less than 2% of people that have been infected. So as you keep going along, the chances of actually dying of the illness, especially for people under 50, is very, very small indeed. But despite its relatively low risk to most people, recent polls have shown the coronavirus has many Brits nervous about returning to normal life. An Ipsos Mori poll found 60% of Britons would feel uncomfortable about using public transport and visiting bars and restaurants if the lockdown is eased in May, while 40% said they would be uncomfortable about sending their children to school or going shopping. You know, the public have difficulty about risk. And, you know, you know I, I, I get scared going on aeroplanes, and uh, not that I've been on one for a couple of months, but you get scared. Whereas crossing a road, I'm not scared, but maybe it's the other way around. I'm at greater risk crossing the road than I am sitting on an aeroplane, but it's, it's perceived that way. Now, it's true that people with pre-existing illnesses, especially older people, over 70, people with diabetes, people that are obese, people that have got heart and lung disease, they're at a greater risk of, getting, of dying. They're not at a greater risk of being infected, but the greater risk of serious complications. And that's because their lungs can't tolerate this very unusual reaction that happens in COVID. One worrying consequence of the public's coronavirus fears may be an unwillingness to attend hospital for other illnesses. NHS figures have shown a 57% drop in A&E admissions from the same time last year suggesting the pandemic has frightened people away from healthcare centres. It will come back when this is over. It is fear. The worry, of course, in all that avoidance of hospitals, there are cancer, there's heart disease, there's mental health issues that are not being diagnosed. So trying to restore faith in use of the health service for illnesses, however trivial, or if they persist, they should be sorted out and finding other ways than A&E to get people back.